Welcome once again to Let's Play Riven. Previously we arrived on the Age of the Rebels and were immediately captured. That's becoming something of a trend in this game. Now that we've regained consciousness, let's look around. We appear to be in a cell of some kind. If we look out the window here, we can see the lake. And that's, I think, the place where we linked into. So it appears that we're inside this giant tree that we could see when we arrived. It's the giant tree that's also on the, uh, the cover of Riven's box. Here's a ball. Don't appear to have any food right now. Through here we can look to the inside of the tree. There's a guy walking across the bridge there. It appears that the moiety who have uh, migrated into this age live inside this giant tree. We've built a village there which somewhat resembles the village on uh, Riven, at least in that the huts are around. Looks quite nice actually. It's a shame that we don't actually get to explore this. I would really have liked to just walk around this village, see what it's like. While we're looking here we can see several things happening, we just saw a guy pass by the window. But our immediate concern is to get out of prison. Is there anything here that can help us? There is not, but... Something appear someone appears to be coming. Who could that be? Katrina e nao da saia e palo. Yapa e manai e lepo. I don't speak Ravenese. Still don't. Eu te sai. Becaretere wira pe e lo kene falapo. Te sai. Why te falupe? Okay. Well, I don't really know what she said, but uh, it seems she was talking about Catherine. Although she pronounced the name a bit different. So this appears to have come from Catherine. Oh, there we go. Let's see what we got. Two books. And one of these books is... Yes, it's the prison book we got from Atrus in the introduction. Finally, after three hours of playing, we've gotten it back. My precious book, we've got it back. We also got another journal. This time one written by Catherine. Okay, uh, I said I would read the journals in separate videos, but we still have quite a lot of time left in this one. So I'll begin reading it now. If you don't want to listen to me, just stop this video and continue after I finish the journal. Now this journal is quite long, so it'll probably take me two or three videos to finish. I'll indicate clearly in the titles uh, which videos are just uh, reading the journal, so you can easily skip them if you want to. I linked to Riven a week ago. The smell of the place overwhelmed me moments before I could even could see anything. With my sight only partially cleared, I stood motionless, peering ahead through a dim veil which was slowly lifting. There was a violent clang and bars appeared. I remember breathing slowly and very deeply, tasting the familiar Riven air but not recognizing a thing. I must have been hit with a dart right away. I thought it was an insect bite at first. I'm trying to remember it all, but it's difficult, maybe because of the drug. There was a voice. A man I did not recognize stood before me. Rivenese, though he was wearing dunny dress. He seemed to be talking to me, but the poison was already to taking effect. A shadow crept in and I fell asleep. Then there were the many voices, but I understood none of them. Like hundreds of people whispering, I couldn't make wake up. No matter, the dream did end. And now, to be here with Etty, it's been so many years, I didn't realize how much I missed her. Like a piece of me that I had forgotten I'd lost. She's beautiful and so full of warmth. But the years have also left her with a wound, which was not there when we were children. Well, it seems that Catherine put a note in the book. Well, let's see it. I write quickly for my prison. Nila will return your book with the moiety which the moiety intercepted upon your arrival. After questioning her, I've concluded that it was written by Atris for a very specific purpose. 
Gen will desire to use it, although he may have suspicions. If you can find my prison, you will still need the combination to release me. Gen keeps it in his office. Then, I assume we're to signal Atrus. I think I know how it might be done. But don't signal him before I am released. Catherine. Okay, continue with the journal. I do wish you were more interested. It seems like I'm asking all the questions. It's awkward. No one asked me where I've been or what I've been doing. This hurts. But I understand it. Their beliefs are born out of ignorance and oppression. They are gentle people, but they've had their nest destroyed and now they frantically cling to anything that might save them. But why have they chosen to cling to me? I'm confused. As a child I always felt out of place here. I never belonged. They misunderstood me, and I couldn't relate to them. But now I'm overwhelmed by an intense feeling that I owe everything to them and this place. I thought I would never see them again, and yet I'm here. I've been given the second chance. But a second chance at what? Saving them? Fulfilling their prophecies? Being their savior? The moiety. Atreus would want me to chronicle all that I've learned. I can at least record some of it. It seems that when Atreus and I trapped Gen on Riven many years ago, our efforts were witnessed by most of the inhabitants here. Two of the Rivenese even witnessed a confrontation with Gen at Fissure, where I linked back to Mist, and where Atreus threw himself into the abyss. Of course, they understood little of what they were seeing, but they somehow were able to guess that we had won, that Gen was no god at all, but only a feeble impostor, a false god, and that we had trapped him here on Riven. I always hoped they would deduce this simple fact, the simple truth, but their further conclusions have astonished me. Atreus had stripped Gan of his power, therefore Atreus must be a true god. As a god, he was choosing me, the, sp the spiritual misfit from the Rivenese womb, to be his wife. I was transcending into deity and would lord over Riven forever. Thus the moiety, as they call themselves, were born, a dissident society, sworn enemies of Gan. I did not know of their beliefs regarding Atreus and myself until two days ago. And he was, for some reason, hesitant to tell me. I can't figure out why. I know she doesn't believe these things. Of course, everyone else assumed that I would be aware of my own god status, so they made no effort to inform me. I only realized it at a recent gathering to which I was invited. <coughs> I sat at the front of a dimly lit and crowded cave, as they told a mythical story of my own life, acting out the, the battle between Atreus, myself and Gen, at the edge of the fissure. The events had been exaggerated into grandiose proportions. It was offensive, but I was unable to stop it. I was unable to break the illusion which is the very foundation of their hope and their purpose, and which had given them courage to band together and rebel against Gen. Since then, I have learned of other doctrines and beliefs that have evolved, the most disturbing of which is the conviction that one day I would return to Riven to free them. Some believe that I will overthrow Gen. Others believe that I will bring them to paradise. I don't know how to deal with this. I fight it myself. I love these people, my only real kindred. But they will not love me as an equal, which hurts me. I would rather be their slave than their master. Over the years, as Gen's power has become greater and greater, the moiety's numbers have grown and they have become more and more adept at hiding themselves. They now live in a com complex network of caves that he still has not discovered. The moiety, for the most part, have completely severed their relationship with any of the Rivenese that chose against joining them. But I hope they have not sacrificed vital limbs in order to remove the cancer. Even Father and Enant are still on the surface, in Gan's domains, and I long to see them. But. A dimness shrouds Etty's face every time I've mentioned them. Since this break took place, they have interfered with the surface in several superficial ways, occasionally sabotaging one of Gain's constructions and stealing food from the villagers. They wear strange masks and costumes during their scant forays to the island's surface, and take this regalia very seriously, refusing to be seen by anyone outside the moiety unless they are properly attired. 
Okay, I will continue reading the journal in the next video. See you then.